Hey everyone, welcome to Motoroids. My name is Guru and this is my Maruti Suzuki Jimny. If you haven't seen the first review that I did of the Maruti Jimny, please head back and check out the review on Motoroids. This review is going to be a follow-up and will cover some of the modifications that I've done to my vehicle, um, some of my experiences driving it off-road and on-road for long distances, more of a 3000 km long-term ownership review. After a very, very long wait, I finally took delivery of this chimney on the 1st of August. The last time I bought a new car was in 2010, when I bought a brand new Maruti Suzuki Gypsy. And this is the next new car that I've put my money on. In the first review, I had spoken about uh, the fact that the stock tires that Maruti had provided, which were, which are the Bridgestone Duellers, uh, they're pretty nice tire for this car. That remains true. What I've done is I've changed my tires to the Goodyear all-terrain silent track 21575 R15s. More out of a need for perhaps a little bit extra durability from the tires. It does come with a compromise of ride quality. In every off-road that I've been to with my car, there's been another Jimny with the stock tires and whatever obstacle I could do, he was able to do as well. Some of the most subtle modifications that I've done on the vehicle. The first is the rear window defogger wires. Uh, they are exposed in the chimney, so I procured these plastic covers that protect them. It's just a precautionary modification. The second modification was to address a complaint that I had with the chimney from the first review, um, which was, where do you put your mobile phone? So I procured, again, these plastic uh, pieces, which fit into the door handles, and they provide a space for you to keep a wallet or a mobile phone, so that it doesn't fall straight through. Another modification that I did, um, more from a utility standpoint, is the instrument console tray, which is like a parcel tray with a space to keep your keys or your loose change. You can also keep a mobile phone over here. It just adds a little bit more utility to an otherwise very sparse cabin. In an effort to add more storage and usable storage in the chimney, I put down this storage unit which fits between the gear shifter and the handbrake, uh, small items. They fit neatly in this storage unit. Also for more storage, and it's also a space where the passenger can keep their mobile phone. It's a small pouch that I purchased in uh, Decathlon, and it fits neatly into the grab rail on the passenger side. It's a good modification. I'm sure you'll have plenty of options. The one I picked is quite small, and I did it consciously because uh, the passenger airbag is... Hello. The, the passenger airbag is right above the grab rail, and you don't want anything getting in the way of that. From an aesthetic standpoint, I didn't like the look of the spare tire on the back and I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, maybe to protect the tire from the spare tire from UV damage, I got a spare tire cover. I think it looks cool and also it makes my car stand out a bit from the others on the road. I haven't seen anybody else in Chennai at least who has that uh, specific cover. After a lot of consideration, I went for the noodle mats. I've had a great experience with these in, in, the, in a Creta and they really do suck up a lot of dirt and they, it's not very visible when you look into the car it doesn't look like there's a lot of dirt in the car so that's why i went for the noodle mats one of the most expensive modifications that i've done to the jimny is the addition of ventilated seats uh, these are by a company called rig gear and i got them in black color do they work yes they're pretty amazing especially after you uh, do a bit of off-roading and you're all sweaty and you get back into the car they give you that instant cooling for your back which which is quite nice to be honest it, it makes you feel really nice and cool the moment you get inside the car they aren't active as in they're not cooled directly by the air conditioning system rather they just draw in the air from the ambient and push it up to your lower back and to your butt the Jimny is not a very fast car the throttle pedal feels completely disconnected from the engine it feels completely dead that is one of the downsides of the ride-by-wire throttle systems you find in cars these days. The Jimny is also really slow on the highways. It's very difficult to execute overtakes because of how unresponsive the throttle is. You really have to mash the pedal in to get any sort of response on this engine. Now, I didn't want to modify the car, the engine. You know, I didn't want to remap. I didn't want to do an exhaust system uh, or any of these complicated and expensive mods straight off the bat because, you know, it's still under warranty and all that. What I did instead was research throttle tuners. So how the ECU works is um, it reads your throttle position from the throttle position sensor in the ride-by-wire, which is basically near your pedal. 
it knows which gear you are in it knows what rpm you are in what speed you are doing and correspondingly it results in a certain position of the throttle body unfortunately in the case of the jimny and i'm sure in many other cars this is always tuned for efficiency for giving you the maximum amount of mileage and for emissions and potentially also to cater to a wide range of driving driving skills maybe driving skills experience if you have too sharp a throttle response it might catch out somebody uh, who is not as skilled as so that's why the manufacturers have to play this game and that's why in the jimny it, it's very dull the throttle response is really dull the throttle tuner which is a device that i have installed um is from a company called EVC uh, there are two models one is the EVC and one is the EVC X which has a few extra features which personally i didn't feel that i needed so i went for the EVC very very straightforward to install it, it just goes into the car in a few minutes and since you're not messing around with the mapping of the car you're not touching any of the you know the fueling or the electronics you're not increasing the power in any way all it does is make your throttle response a lot more crisp at the moment i have the evc in pass through mode and the car feels as lethargic as ever i really questioned my decision to buy the jimny after i you know picked it up from the showroom somehow when you do these first drives and they give you the car and it's all you know there's a lot of excitement uh, particularly when it's something that you've been waiting for that's the risk of watching these uh, initial first impressions reviews because a lot of your personal biases play a role in how you feel about the car after getting the car uh, getting my own car delivered i felt man did i make a mistake it feels so slow honestly i can i can tell you now that after installing the evc that joy of owning a new car has come back now i'm in the stock uh, mode which is the pass through mode i'm just going to switch it to the ultimate mode i don't know if you can tell in the video but here we go that is a lot better so what it also does is not just speed up the throttle response somehow the gear shifts also happen much faster at a much quicker rate it's not a race car let's be honest but it does feel pretty amazing both on the road and off the road you have the confidence to go for those overtakes which previously you just couldn't because the car wouldn't respond so if something you add to the car can put such a big smile on your face i say go for it for me it is the adaptive mode that works the best most of the time i'll be in adaptive or auto i do have a video which i'll put in here where i managed to do a climb using ultimate mode which the other jimnies weren't able to because they didn't have a throttle controller very short run up and a pretty steep climb on sand most of the off roading we do in chennai is sand and there's literally no traction so you need to create the momentum to get over that climb another thing you need to have is throttle response when you're blipping the throttle if you just keep your foot to the floor what's going to happen is you're going to spin those wheels and sink in sand that's what's going to happen so has the jimny really lived up to my expectations there are several compromises there are several annoyances as well let's just get into the you know the ugly stuff first what really bugged me initially with the jimny was the really slow throttle response when i drove from here to masanagudi from chennai to masanagudi via bangalore and mysore it was really dull with a fully loaded car it, it, you know it overtakes were so ridiculously unsafe you had to be going along at full throttle full bore just to overtake a, a normal passenger sedan and you don't expect that from a car which is 17 18 lakhs i still think that it could use a bigger engine that's not going to happen so that's where i feel that the mod that i made with the with by installing the throttle controller was was essential not not an option i think it's not a modification it should have been you know something that was factory fitted well i'm glad i have it another annoying feature for me and i frankly don't know why this is a feature is auto start stop i didn't ask for it if i didn't ask for something it should have been optional right it should be off by default and something that you can turn on if you really want to it's a feature i don't use i don't need it i'm not that interested in fuel efficiency 
I wouldn't have bought a Jimny if that was the case. So why am I being forced by Nexa, by Maruti to live with auto start stop? It's really annoying because if you forget to turn it off and you, you know, you slow down to a halt at a signal, it's going to switch off fine. What's worse is when I pull into my parking lot and I want to stop the car, engage reverse and move back. Between stopping the car and moving the shift lever to reverse, it switches off and then you have to restart again. I'm sure that can't be great for the battery either, right, doing this constantly. It's one of those things that drives me mad. Another annoyance is the electronic traction control interference. There's a heck of a lot of it. Even when, you, particularly when you go off-road and you're trying to do these obstacles and these long climbs uh, with very low traction, you want all the power that you can get and you want that feel in your throttle pedal that you're in charge of you know how much power is going to the road. In worst case, in some situations, it actually applies the brakes. There's nothing more irritating than a car choosing to apply brakes for you when you don't when you really don't want that to happen. So during the during the review of the Jimny, I praised the ride quality, saying that it's a heck of a lot better than the Gypsy. And while that may be true, I, I think I've sort of figured out how they've achieved it. The rear springs in the Jimny are extremely soft to the point where I would say they are unacceptably soft. What ends up happening is the moment you add any kind of load, you add two people, a few bags, the back of the car completely squats. And when that happens, you've already lost all of your suspension travel pretty much, depending on how much uh, weight you have in the back. And when you hit the smallest bump in the road, it's straight up the spine of the people who are sitting in the back. So this is a major issue definitely definitely needs stiffer springs in the back what softer springs also ends up doing is when you make a turn when you make a sharp turn let's say i take a left turn the weight shifts to the outside which is towards the right the right rear spring completely collapses so you have a situation where in a left turn the front left of the car is pointing to the sky and the back is completely squatted to the ground and the opposite is true when you turn right so the car is kind of doing this all the time and the, it's really unnerving particularly at high speeds uh, it creates all sorts of handling problems and you know wobbling the Jimny is not a stable car to drive at speed we didn't get to drive too fast in Dehradun when we were there so maybe that aspect of the handling didn't really come out but now after living with the car for 3000 plus kilometers I absolutely feel that the rear suspension is way too soft and something needs to be done about it. So let's just quickly run through some comparisons and impressions uh, from the first review and see how it stands up. In terms of build quality, I think the Jimny is built really well. Even the interior plastics, which I felt were of a probably not that great a quality, they've, they've actually held up really well. Uh, they clean easily, all the sand and dust from off-roading just wipes off. They don't seem to scratch as easily either, you know, where the uh, greyish black plastic, when you just, you know, rub something on it, it tends to become a lighter shade of grey or even white. So that hasn't happened so far. I think I've spoken already about the suspension and the ride quality. The ride quality is still amazing. On bad patches of road, it just kind of glides through. If you keep around 26, 27 PSI in your stock tyres, and those who upsize can lower it even more, maybe 24, 25 PSI. The ride quality is pretty amazing. It's when you start to increase speed, <clears throat> when things start to go a little bit uh, crazy. I think the only solution to that, if you don't want to lift the vehicle, is to use stiffer springs and way better dampers. Headlights, pretty amazing in the city. On the highway, it doesn't have enough throw, um, but around the city, it's pr plenty bright. I'm coming from a Pajero, which basically felt like it had two candles in the front. Compared to that, this is significantly better. The sound system has actually surprised me. Like in the review, I kind of panned it. Um, it didn't sound great. When you're driving really fast also, there's a lot of outside noises that creep into the cabin. Is it worth investing a lot of money into a Jimny sound system? I don't think so. I think um, you're better served by, you know, spending money on damp, you know, better damping to keep all these extraneous noises in check. And speaking of insulation, another thing that ha tends to happen a lot is a lot of outside smells creep into the cabin very easily and very surprising. Every other car that I own, there are certain stretches on in Chennai where you drive, you know it's going to be pretty whiffy outside, but you don't smell it inside the car. 
in the Jimny you smell it immediately. I've driven the automatic. So my car is an Alpha automatic. I'm glad I got the automatic primarily because of my, my needs and my usage patterns. Even off-road, it, it's pretty nice, you know. It, I don't feel that the auto gets in the way of you clearing some obstacle. Um, maybe the manual will be more precise to drive, more engaging to drive, and you can hold those gears that you want. The AT is a bit weird. It's four-speed, right? If you put it in L, it sticks in first gear. A lot of times what happens when you're doing some longer climbs is that you tend to rev out the engine. So you're not producing any more power. And it stalls essentially. So first gear is not tall enough. But if you put it in two, it what, what it does is it shifts between one and two. So you start an obstacle, you can't start in second gear and just hold that one gear through. Which you could if you had, let's say, a Tiptronic or uh, paddles or something, you can put it, get into second and just hold second all the way through. Here, what happens, it shifts from first to second somewhere in the middle of the obstacle. And that really, that loss of power uh, completely kills the momentum. And then it shifts into second, it's not enough to get over the obstacle. Maybe. When, you're, when you need to decelerate, let's say you're, you've put it in drive and you're going at a certain speed, and you take your foot off the gas, the Jimny tends to freewheel. And there is a sense of not having much in engine braking. In that scenario, you can just press the overdrive button and get it into third, and that kind of gives you a little bit of engine braking. If you need more, you can even shift it into second, um, and that will give you a little bit more engine braking. Where I see this being critical is when you're driving in the hills. Uh, when you're driving in the hills uphill, no problem. When you're coming back down is when, in an, any automatic, you need to have some technique, some um, system in place to avoid getting on the brakes as often as you would. If you use the brakes too much, they will overheat. You may have a situation where you have brake fade. And coming downhill, that's not a pretty situation. Fuel efficiency, kitna deti hai. It's not great. They claim 15, 16. I don't think I've ever had more than 12 and a half or 13 kilometers per liter. Let's say I subtract one KPL because of my upsize tires. Even if I take off two KPL, let's say it should give me 14, right? But I don't think I've ever seen more than 12, 12 and a half, even when I drive carefully. So in the review, I said that the Jimny is perfect for a family of four with their luggage for a weekend trip. Um, I took my family to Masinagudi. It was a five day, five night, six day trip. So we had all our clothes and luggage for the five nights and six days. Uh, we did about for 1300 kilometers. Um, the rear seat comfort wasn't too much of an issue. We stopped frequently. Uh, I, I would say we stopped every 100 kilometers or so. Adequate space in the back. The only thing that tends to happen is your bags pile up on top of each other rather than you know being separate. But I, I maintain, Jimny has enough space for a long trip with four adults and all your luggage and belongings. So I've gone over all the modifications that I've done, the results of the modifications, and you know how it's impacted my ownership experience. Uh, so far, it's been a very positive experience with the Jimny. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the vehicle. I'm really glad that I went down this route. The service experience so far with Maruti has been pretty amazing. There was a situation where a few of the front bumper clips had fallen off. That uh, was concerning because the entire front bumper was moving, you know, swinging up and down. I went in, they fixed it in 15 minutes, didn't charge me a penny. Massively happy, really, really pleased. Uh, with the service experience. How is the Jimny with, you know, specifically off-road compared to a Gypsy? It's a difficult question to answer because you can't buy a new Gypsy today. If you have the option to purchase a Gypsy new and a Jimny new, and your usage uh, was maybe 70-30 with 70% off-road, 30% on-road, I would say go buy the Gypsy. It's easier to mod, it's um, hardier, well, it would obviously cost a lot less than the Jimny because of how unrefined it is. Uh, the engine response with the throttle pedal, the direct connection between the throttle and the engine, the manual shift. So these are all advantages that you have in a Gypsy, which the Jimny still kind of, the refinement actually goes against it from a complete off-roading standpoint. Uh, but if you buy the Jimny purely to go off-road, then spend the heck out of it. I mean, just, just mod it up. You can lift the suspension, you can lift the body, put better suspension, bigger tires, engine, you know, remaps, uh, exhausts, intakes, 
snorkel so the list is endless the amazing thing about this car is it can take take so many shapes and forms depending on the end use case so what you want to do with it we have a few gypsies coming off road with us as well it's always impressive to watch that thing do its off roading it's pretty amazing i really miss uh, i regret selling the gypsy uh, but now i have this so within the limitations of the car is where i'll be playing i almost forgot the most important modification and uh, that is the front grill what what is it about indian manufacturers and chrome uh, i'm really struggling to understand uh, cars that are completely plastered with chrome all over the place it's not a good look it, to me it looks really cheap the front grill of the jimny the chrome really started to put me off and there are several options you can either repaint the entire front bumper you can wrap it what i chose to do is save the original bumper as is and i procured a different bumper which just says suzuki and it's a completely all black uh, bumper with a honeycomb grill i love how it looks i think it's transformed the look of my car it's not the most expensive modification that i've done but it's the one that puts probably a very big smile on my face so i'm one of those few journalists who put their money where their mouth is i guess and actually went ahead and bought my dream car which is the jimny and i'm i'm glad that you get to share this journey with me so stay tuned like share subscribe and put your comments in the comment section down below and let us know what you think of our content and if you own a jimny and you have some ideas to share some modifications to share you know please put that in the comments below as well and we'll be sure to get in touch thank you for watching this is guru signing off for motorways